Howdy. Now what I want to do in this video is talk about improper integrals and I'm going to split this up into a two-part series. What I want to do is I want to do improper integrals straight up and then after that what we'll do is um, the comparison test, okay? So the first thing we need to figure out is what makes an integral improper. And the first thing that makes an integral improper is infinite limits. So a uh, an integral that has an infinite limit, like the integral here from 1 to infinity, that is an example of an improper integral. Now, to better explain the second part, let me give you two integrals. One's going to be improper, one's going to be proper. Let's see if you can identify which one's improper versus proper. So the first integral is I want you to give you this. The second integral I want to give you is this. Now what you need to do is determine which one's improper and which one isn't. The reason that this first integral is the improper one, this one is improper, it's because that notice that this function is undefined at x equals 0. Right? At x equals 0, this function is undefined, and 0 is in fact in between negative 1 and 2. However, this one's perfectly okay. This one's perfectly okay because 0 is not in between 1 and 2. The point that I want to try to make with this is this is a proper integral. The point I want to make with this is that whenever your function is discontinuous somewhere within your limits of integration, that's what makes it improper. Okay? Now, I love improper integrals. Why? Because you just really need to take the integral. Now, if I want to take the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx, just take the integral. The integral of 1 over x is the ln of the absolute value of x, and I'm taking this from 1 to infinity. And so, plugging in the top, this is ln of infinity, minus, plugging in the bottom, that's ln of 1. And ln of infinity definitely goes to infinity, ln of 1 is 0, hey, guess what? That goes to infinity. It diverges. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that is how you do an improper integral. Now, I do need to mention something, unfortunately. This is the right answer. This is how you do it. This integral diverges. But you know why improper integrals are so confusing sometimes? Is because, well, I didn't properly write this. If this is a workout question, you'd only get partial credit, unfortunately, if this was your work. Let me show you how to get full credit. Now, we know that we have an integral a to b of f of x dx, right? It's a basic definite integral, where a is your lower term, b is your upper term. Do you know why they're called improper integrals? Well, it's because these are improperly written. a and b are solely for numbers, not infinities. Infinity is not a number. It's more of a concept, I guess you can say. And so, notice how my top term, my b, is an infinite limit, and therefore it's improperly written. The way to properly write number one, the first thing you would need to do is you would say that this is actually the limit as b approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. From here, you just go about it like normal. Limit as b approaches infinity of the ln of the absolute value of x from 1 to b. This is equal to the limit as b approaches infinity of the ln of b minus ln of 1, which is just infinity, therefore diverges. Okay, here's the thing, is this right here gets you full credit. But I don't get too confused with the limits. This ain't Cal 1, okay? I remember you might still have bad memories from Cal 1 when that first exam was just littered with limits. It's not the case, okay? These limits are solely there so that you can properly write an improper integral. But when it comes down to it, you're just taking the integral, period. Take the integral, plug in top, minus plug in bottom, bang, you're done. Cool? So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to be taking these integrals, but just be aware that if this is a workout problem, make sure you write these limits in front and uh, take away the part that is that makes the integral improper. Let's take a look at number two. Number two is a great problem for one of three reasons. Reason number one, integral negative infinity to infinity. Professors don't like that. 
So instead, what you need to do is you need to split this into two separate integrals. And what you need to do is pick a random number, <laughs> a random number between negative infinity and infinity. You literally can't miss any number that you want between negative infinity to infinity. I like zero. That's just my personal preference. So you'll be taking the integral from negative infinity to zero of one over x squared plus nine, plus the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus nine. Okay, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna do both of these integrals separately and then just add your two sums together. Now, if you remember in a previous video, one over x squared plus nine, remember how I said, remember these integrals because that's gonna show up multiple times, especially during a second exam, which is when these questions are normally asked. The integral of one over x squared plus nine is one third times the arctangent of x over three. I'll be taking this integral from negative infinity to zero. This reason number two, by the way, that this is a real um, important integral is to note, make sure you note this, in case you uh, missed the last video, uh, the integral of one over x squared plus a squared is always one over a times the arctangent of x over a plus c. Okay, where in this case my a is 3 because 9 is just, well, 3 squared. That's why I get the 1 third arctangent of x over 3. Anyway, so we're going to go plus, and the integral of this is also 1 third times the arctangent of x over 3, and this is going from 0 to infinity. And just like any definite integral, we're going to plug in the top minus plug in the bottom. And so, this is going to be 1 third times plugging in the top, I'll have the arctangent of 0 minus, plugging in the bottom, I'll have the arctangent of negative infinity. And then plus, i got to do it with this one as well. So I'm going to do 1 third times plug in top minus plug in bottom. Plug in, in the top, arctangent of infinity minus, plug in, in the bottom, arctangent of 0. Remember how I said there are three reasons? Reason number one negative infinity to infinity, you split that into two. Reason number two, remember this integral. And the reason they love arctangents is because of reason number three. Do y'all know what the graph of arctangent looks like? Well, here's what it looks like. This is my coordinate system, x and y. Arctangent of x looks like this. We have a horizontal asymptote at negative pi over two and positive pi over 2. This is the arctangent of x. And the reason that professors and teachers love arctangents when dealing with improper integrals is because arctangent of negative infinity, that goes somewhere. As x approaches negative infinity, arctangent approaches negative pi over 2. And arctangent of positive infinity, as x goes to positive infinity, your arctangent goes to a positive pi over 2. And then finally, arctangent of 0 is just, well, 0. And so what this is going to be, this will be 1 third times, I'm going to have arctangent of 0 is 0, minus arctangent of negative infinity is a negative pi over 2, plus of this 1 third times, Arctangent of positive infinity, that goes to positive pi over 2. And so it's going to be pi over 2 minus arctangent of 0. Hey, we know that to be 0. One third here, there's going to be negative or minus a negative pi over 2. So it's going to be one third times positive pi over 2, which is pi over 6. One third times pi over 2 is pi over 6. That's just 2 pi over 6, which reduces down to pi over 3. And so that's why this integral is going to be pi over 3. And so remember, negative infinity to infinity, split into two integrals, split, <laughs> you can pick whatever number you want, I like 0. Remember this uh, integral, remember the 1 over x squared plus a squared? It's going to be that arctangent. And finally, know what arctangent of infinity and negative infinity go to. Arctangent of positive infinity goes to a positive pi over 2 arctangent of negative infinity goes to a negative pi over 2. There's one more problem that I want to do though. One more problem and then what we'll do is we'll do the comparison test in the next video. And so the last problem I want to do is something like here with number 3. For number 3, once again, why is this improper? This is improper because x cannot equal 1 and 
and one is in between zero and three, okay? Had this been from, like, say, two to three, this would have been a basic proper integral that probably would have been on your first test, one of the very first things you'd have done. This is an improper integral because you've got to split this into two separate integrals, okay? The reason you split this into two separate integrals is your function is discontinuous at one. So what you need to do here is we're going to take the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over 1 minus x squared plus, then you go from 1 to 3 of 1 over 1 minus x squared. And you're going to treat this just like the other one where just do each integral separately and then add them together. And so um, this right here, both of these are going to be u subs. They're pretty easy. U sub set u equal to 1 minus x and just go from there. After doing u sub correctly, though, um, you should come out to just 1 over 1 minus x if you do your u sub correctly. Okay, And we're going to go from 0 to 1. And so by plugging 1 into there, I'm going to have 1 over well, 1 minus 1 is 0 minus, I'm plugging 0 into there, it's 1 over 1, but here's the thing, any number over 0 goes to infinity. So you're done. It diverges. Anytime something goes to infinity, infinity plus or minus anything is just going to be infinite, okay? At least in Cal 2, okay? As you get to higher level stuff and start dealing with cardinality, we'll, we'll worry about that a couple years down the road. But for right now, Cal 2, if you have an infinity plus or minus something else, that's going to diverge. Cool? So, this is how you do your basic um, improper integrals. Join me in the next video, and what we'll do is I want to spend the next video talking about the comparison test, because look at number four. You can't integrate that. So join me in the next video so we know, and we can learn to determine whether this integral will converge or diverge.